In the last lesson we learned how we can calculate the rotation of the tires of our car and uh, now it works very nice but we also found a limitation and we want to fix uh, this in our setup. So I have a small issue here which I found. Uh, if I move the car you see that the rear wheel is sometimes a little bit sliding and this could happen uh, if your bounding box node which we created earlier just check bounding box and set the matrix mode from global to local then everything will work fine. This is because our tire is very low res and as you can see here um, because it's so low res we have the spikes here so we have a flat side and then here we have a spike and so the it can happen that the bounding box is jiggling a little bit and if you set the matrix mode to local the bounding box will rotate with your tire so then we don't have this problem anymore just if you have this problem, check the bounding box node and set it the matrix mode from local uh, from global to nodal uh, local. Sorry. So set it to local. That's how we do it. Okay. So then we fixed this issue here. And now we want to fix um the other problem. So we can right now we only can move in one dimension because we measure the um position of our car in X dimension but we want something else. So um, to fix this problem, we can do the following. We measure the uh, distance that our car drives in one frame. So we always compare the current position of our car to the position of our car in the previous frame, calculate uh, the distance and use this distance to tell the tire how much rotation he should add to the current rotation. So it sounds complicated, but it's not that hard. So first of all, we unplug this one here, because we will do it in another way. Um, delete the output port here, and then we need two new output ports. And we need the global position, or the, the current position, just position. And we also need the previous position. So this output uh, port will always give you the position of your car in the last frame. And now we uh, have a new node called distance. This node is super simple. You just plug in two vectors, one, two, and um, it will give you the distance of those two positions as a real. Um, so we always know how far the, the car moved in the last frame. So we will just copy our result node here, plug that one in. Make sure that under calculate animation refresh is checked. And if we now take a look at our car, take it and move it, you see that uh, when we are moving the number changes. If I hit play we also get an update here. But as soon as I stop to move it snaps back to zero because then there's no difference between the current frame and the last frame and if I move very fast the value is very high and if I move very slow the value is also very slow. So this is actually something we want to have so very good. I'll set it back to zero. So now we know how far our car moves in one frame and we just connect this to our old range mapper. Let's unplug our tires here because we have to do something else first. So our range mapper, which is still set to our um, to our values, we will connect this one here. So now we know how much our tire has to rotate if we moved, for example, one centimeter in the last frame. But if we now would just connect this one to our tire, um, the tire won't ever make one one whole rotation because it always uh, rotates um, that much uh, how he uh, moved in the last frame. So it would only jiggle like this, uh, like in very small values. So we need something more. We will take one tire, it doesn't matter which one. So this is, then this is the boss or something. We will take the current rotation of our tire. So coordinates, rotation, P. 
And then we will take a math node. Math. And now we will take the current rotation of our uh, tire and add it to the to the number that the range mapper tells us. So it works like this. We know, for example, that our um, tire right now is at zero degrees and then our um, car moved a certain distance in the last frame. And our range mapper calculates how much has the tire to rotate in this last frame. So we take the current um, rotation of our tire, add the value that the range mapper tells us, and the, um, the result will be the new rotation of our tire. So we copy this um, tire again, the same tire than before, delete the output port, create an input port, coordinates, rotation, pitch axis, and connect it to our math node. This is something we can do with all our nodes again. So we just use the um, second tire as a yeah as a reference for our other tires because all our tires have the same rotation. So we can do this. So let's first of all check if it works. So again, I will hit play that uh, we have a good viewport refresh. I'll take the car, move forwards. We see all the tires are moving. Very good. All of them stick perfectly to the ground. Let's set it back to zero. And now let's try something else. Rotate it in this direction. And move. And it still works very, very good. So all of our tires are pinned to the floor and rotate in the in the right way. And this is basically what we wanted. So now you can uh, simply, let me first reset this one here, maybe to something like this. Now we could uh, simply use a spline. So I will just use a B spline maybe and uh, draw something here. So this is just for, for a test, maybe something like this. And now our car rig should be able to just um, drive along the spline. So I will set the spline in the intermediate points to uniform, maybe 50, and give our um, main null object, attack, cinema 4D tags, align to spline. And I will drag in my uh, spline path. And then we could animate this. So I go at frame zero, make a keyframe for the position and go to frame 400 and make a keyframe for um, position 100%. If we now take a look at our car and hit play, you see that it starts to move. Oh, first of all, we need to go on our tag, on the align to spline tag, and check this checkbox here, that it always points in the right direction. And if we now hit play and take a look at our car we see that the tires are spinning in the right way very nice and it works all the time so we could also open up our timeline click on the dodge and then we have the curve of our um, align to spline tag and we could create two more keyframes and for example make it slower something like this So it will break, slow down, and then start to accelerate again. So we should see that here somewhere. The car comes around the corner, gets slower, the tires start to rotate slower, and then it will uh, take up some more speed again. So this is now a very simple but effective way to rig a car. Um, I would just uh, delete the spline and the align to spline tag again and maybe set my car back to zero. But I actually want a little bit more controls, maybe a controller to um, define the banking of my car because when a car is pretty fast in, the, in a turn you will see something like this a little bit, something like this or 
when it accelerates, it will look like this. And when it breaks, it will look like this. So I want to build a control for that. And this is what we will do in the next lesson.